How did the adage turn out? Are those who easily become bored uninteresting people? Or was it those who are never bored may simply be uninteresting? Whatever it was, INFJs are usually never bored since they are natural philosophers. However, because of some of their unusual, misunderstood characteristics, they do run the risk of being perceived by the general public as uninteresting. Could these be anything? Let's look more closely. Why do people consider INFJs boring? 1. Because they don't look for sensation, INFJs are perceived as being uninteresting. It appears that many INFJs are naturally very sensitive individuals. Only 20% of the population is born with a neural system that is more adept at picking up on subtle inputs. For instance, hazy sounds or others repressed emotions, this enables a highly keen awareness of both external and internal stimuli. However, the world easily overstimulates the trade-off. Because they are profound feelers who can go through a wide range of emotions, HSPs are constantly working to keep their emotions in check so they don't feel overburdened on a regular basis. So, a typical INFJ typically tries to limit sensory overload. You might imagine that there is already more than enough stimulation pouring in with a rich inner world of racing ideas and images on top of heightened senses. Which rules out skydiving for the sensitive INFJ, weekly late night clubbing, and numerous group get-togethers. However, as most individuals enjoy seeking out excitement and sensational social interactions in order to experience a wider range of emotions, they may find the emotionally responsible and sober INFJ to be very boring. 2. Because INFJs are superb self-entertainers, they are perceived as boring. What? Last Friday night, while drinking red wine and listening to smooth jazz alone, you created a budget plan. Huh? You created nicely color-coded Microsoft Excel spreadsheets with your new video game War Tactics for your World of Warcraft guild on Saturday night. I can't believe you woke up at 4 a.m. on Sunday to work on your web company before you had to go back to your 9 to 5 job on Monday. Despite how dull these INFJ activities may seem, the majority of INFJs would need to search up the definition of boredom in a dictionary. Bored? No, there is still no chance. INFJs don't require much amusement outside of their own minds because they are passionate dreamers, practical creators, and tireless thinkers. It comprises a vibrant small cosmos full of stimulating ideas, images, and thoughts moving quickly and worth studying. It doesn't really matter whether it's an intriguing idea that strikes you while driving home from work, a reflective stroll in a park, or a quirky activity like creating Excel spreadsheets with video game combat plans. The INFJ's mind continually generating theories, viewpoints, thoughts, and bringing back memories for them to engage in. Therefore, all of these activities are amusing regardless. A typical INFJ wouldn't even be able to recall their most recent bout of boredom, except that they must keep the lights on at home due to their required day work. Yes, it's possible to spot them drooling in a corner while simply glancing out the window. The INFJ is in complete pleasure, therefore there's no need to save them. But many people, like INFJs most of the time, find it quite dull to spend the weekends alone. Some people would rather have company and be entertained by the outside world. As a result, they find the INFJ who only entertains themselves to be a genuine bore. Yawn. The three scenarios at the beginning are all genuine stories, which is a fun fact. Shout out to yours truly and my INFJ male pal. Three. Because they are organized, INFJs are perceived as uninteresting. The INFJ's preferred method of decision-making. They appear to prefer a planned and structured way of life over the outer world because of judging, or the J in INFJ. They enjoy predicting, working for, and manifesting a desired ideal future because they are future-oriented beings. 
Because of their introverted intuition, they have a remarkable talent for pattern recognition and future possibility predicting. INFJs prefer to manage life's uncertainties as much as they can because the future will always be an unpredictable, chaotic, and abstract, metaphysical world. They typically implement daily routines, make goals by using goal setting, create to-do lists, and work toward task completion in an effective and regular manner. They also tend to wake up at predetermined times each day. INFJs establish a sense of security, familiarity, efficiency, and control in their daily lives by using a systematic approach to living. All of this enables individuals to reduce the stress caused by the overwhelming environment and aids in their mental health. However, as a result, they find any changes to their routines or impediments to their plans to be inconvenient. Despite having generally fairly flexible personalities on the inside, INFJs can come out as stiff or uninspiring when it comes to their behavior. Therefore, they strongly disapprove of any last-minute invitations to social gatherings, unexpected visits to their home, and unplanned trips into the city. INFJs are therefore perceived as boring since they like to set some time in their colorful Google Calendar for when to be impromptu. 4. Because they are committed to their life's work, INFJs are stereotyped as being uninteresting. INFJs are constantly moving toward their imagined promised land, which is just on the edge of the hypothetical horizon in the future. Their finest ambitions exist in that imagined promised country. Genuineness, freedom, benevolence, generosity, creativity, beauty, wisdom, intellect, dignity, communion, and nurturing connections are a few examples. INFJs aspire to embody each of these goals in their own life. Depending on the individual, these ideals could take different forms. For instance, one INFJ might express their creativity through the practice of painting in the Renaissance style from the 15th century, but another might do it by producing electronic music nowadays. A high bar for living. The idealistic INFJ sets high standards for their own lives, as you would have predicted. For instance, making regular sacrifices is necessary to reach the level of creativity of a typical Renaissance painter, or to become a published author. Even just making that ideal promised land appear occasionally in the distance of that metaphorical horizon as though one is getting close to the destination by any quantitative measure, let alone really arriving there, demands constant discipline and an unwavering work ethic. Therefore, INFJs continually struggle with leading an organized and disciplined existence in an effort to work on their life's purpose rather than leading a life of hedonism when people are only guided by their instincts, impulses, and desire for pleasure. Others might categorize the INFJ as boring because they believe that because of their situation, and commitment to a life's purpose. They should lead boringly serious, repetitious, goal-oriented lives that are primarily alone. 5. Because they prioritize developing a strong moral character, INFJs are stereotyped as being dull. We're all susceptible to it occasionally. During the daily 4 p.m. office get-together around the coffee maker, I indulged in the most recent rumors about a certain hateful co-worker or relishing obstinacy for its own sake and romanticizing a rebellious without a reason attitude. Experimenting with offensive behavior in an effort to project what modern pop culture considers to be the most desired identity, a edgy persona. INFJs are frequently allergic to rebellious behavior that results from conceit and the need for attention. The INFJ has a propensity to dislike romanticized vain acts of rebellion, which presumably began during adolescence. You'll often hear that INFJs didn't experience the infamous time of adolescent rebellion against their parents, a stage in life that so many people cherish. INFJs, on the other hand, probably began out constrained, shy, considerate, and empathic 
which may have caused them to turn away from Team Rebellion out of sympathy for their parents. They stressed moral character development instead, where one constantly aspires to do right while upholding integrity. Now, many INFJs later discovered the hard way that there are appropriate times and places to disregard convention and choose their own course of action. When one needs to protect themselves from tyranny, abusive behavior, or a poisonous relationship dynamic that endangers their health and independence, for instance. Funny enough, a lot of INFJs defy social norms of conformity and expectations by taking a sharp left turn off the boring work-life highway and heading straight into the woods, where they steadily carve out their own paths in the direction of the ideal promised land that was stated earlier. However, INFJs normally only defy the law when it is absolutely necessary. Many INFJs find this idea of rebelliousness for the sake of rebelling which is generally found in teens and students in their early 20s, to be quite repugnant. Due to the INFJ's great demand for morality and integrity, which frequently prevents them from misbehaving or carelessly testing the boundaries like everyone else, they are frequently viewed as uninteresting by their peers. As a result, the INFJ runs the risk of coming off as overly serious and uninteresting. Six. Because they dislike social media, INFJs are stereotyped as being dull. A never-ending digital web of retouched selfies with a menacing cacophonous soundtrack of unending, asynchronous, seven-second video loops playing in the background. Or, in more simple terms, social media at least in part. Like a vampire dislikes daylight, most INFJs want to escape the digital circus. Now, a typical INFJ might indulge in some social media platforms, such as Reddit or YouTube. However, given such platforms actually lend themselves nicely to in-depth content, this would mostly be for them to educate themselves on select areas they truly find interesting. However, daily use of smartphones involves constant swiping, chatting, posting, and liking on social media sites in order to be social. No, God no. Nobody needs to know what the INFJ is doing privately, they believe. Within 24 hours, an INFJ will for certainly go nuts from this constant interaction, reaction to their smartphones that makes them seem like a behavioral psychologist's lab rat. Unfortunately, a lot of individuals are addicted to their phones so much because their online broadcasting presence, relationships, and validation give them a strong sense of who they are. Nowadays, responding to incoming texts, chats, or even engagements you didn't even start is considered common decency. And many individuals aren't pleased you left them hanging in that way. After all, they must have earned your constant, full attention. Having said that, they wouldn't comprehend why some people opt out of what is thought to be the next stage in human evolution since societies as a whole appear to be spending more and more time online. The internet our collective consciousness is now a 4 Kelvin digital on-demand resource. The INFJ may consider many of the benefits and drawbacks of social media as well as the moral and health issues illustrated above but most people would consider it blasphemous to even consider a world without these platforms. What, you ancient, dusty INFJ, have no social media presence? Boring. 7. Because they take a while to warm up, INFJs are stereotyped as being dull. The normal INFJ needs some time to get the wheels of social interaction spinning because they are natural observers and truly reclusive introverts. They have the potential to become quite extroverted, but it takes them some time to adjust. Their emotional state and frequently their extraordinarily perceptive senses to the current social situation. Who are these individuals? How do they behave? How do I act in this social situation? Are people feeling at ease? How can I maintain a positive energy flow among all participants? 
These are divided unconscious inquiries that INFJs ask themselves, not necessarily conscious questions. Before their body, senses, mental state, and emotional state are in harmony with whatever social environment they are in, they may spend a lot of time in their heads. At first, they might seem a little distant or spend a lot of time considering how to respond to questions from a group of observers. For the first 30 minutes or so, the INFJ could be highly self-conscious of their body language, voice tone, and general demeanor. INFJs that have honed their social skills, however, are like a train and will keep accelerating as they pick up more and more people to join the train of social harmony after that initial warm-up. INFJs can be slow to warm up, which makes it difficult for them to make a strong first impression. Many people who are outgoing by nature or who are considered classic extroverts are always willing to make social sacrifices. They could become bored by the INFJ's stiff first impression and lose out on their bubbly side, which frequently only emerges after a preliminary warm-up. 